Uh, yeah, so the, the last issue before the break <laughs> was that I, I because I changed uh, the I am role to use the original AWS package from Pulumi instead of AWS native, the, the keyword argument was different. Uh, so I just changed it back just for that one. So we, we're back to having a mix of these things, which seems to be the thing to do at present. Uh, feels kind of weird to me, but it, it works. So whatever. Uh, and so we get the, uh, the timeout changes for the job definitions and things that I added between streams that we talked about earlier. And that updated job definition then causes uh, these top level event rules and targets to get updated. Uh, and then here's the new role and function. So yeah, let's go ahead and update. And uh, I don't I don't know brainless if you're you're back from your break yet. But uh, I did go over and check out what code words was. Uh, it's you know, it's, so it's like leak code, right? Is is what I kind of took away from it. Um, but seemingly more focused on like focus practice, aka katas, um, which is something I've not looked at for for quite a while. But like uh, I do recall at one point at a lot of like TDD style katas for uh, practicing that sort of thing. Although that doesn't seem to be its focus, code words focus. Uh, and like leak code, it looks like it's focused on like writing code inside of their web app, which I yeah, I get why you would want to do that, especially in like a in a in an interviewing kind of context. Uh, on the other hand, I'm ambivalent about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so we we did things. Uh, specifically, we should have a new lambda function over in AWS, and uh, let's go check that out. Let's find out what lambdas I have in this account. Uh, random things from six and five years ago, apparently. Uh, here is our summarized transcription lambda. Uh, this is not gonna show us a lot because we just have a file called bootstrap, which is uh, one, more than three megabytes in size and also a binary. Oh, wow. Did they? This is new. They have embedded BS code inside of the Lambda code tab. Uh, when did this happen? It has been at least a few weeks, maybe a month or two, uh, since I've gone to the code tab in a Lambda, but this is definitely new. Wow, and they have like custom tab things here. <laughs> There are extension. Okay. Custom extension. You have to deploy test events. Nice. Well, good job, AWS. You, I, I approve. See now, why can't uh, I'm, I mean, maybe it does, and I've just not gotten that far. But why can't uh, <laughs> something like Code Wars or Elite Code do this? Anyway, uh, apparently our binary. Well, it's a debug binary for one, right? Uh, it's 34 megabytes. Presumably the um, fraud build would be smaller. Uh, okay, well, we have a Lambda. Uh, we could test it. A new test event. Nice. Okay. Uh, and we'll just say I think this invoke it. So we got a run. We can do full screen. <laughs> can we install other extensions? 
uh, or ooh, theme settings. Uh, solarized dark, please. <laughs> there we go. All right. I'm just living here now. Uh, anyway. Okay, so here's our test event. Uh, and we can see received event, lambda event, uh, payload, and the, the, the things from the test event. Uh, and some context. And uh, x-ray trace ID, that's nice. Uh, function name, memory, yada, 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 and then report. Uh, it took us 1.2 seconds. So this was a uh, cold boot, cold start, whatever you call it. Uh, if I invoke this again, we get better. Should be a lot better, yeah. 20, 20 milliseconds, right? Uh, we, we lost the previous execution, didn't we? Okay. So we went from like over a second down to 20 milliseconds. That is kind of the difference between uh, cold and warm <laughs> invocations uh, for, for lambdas. That's just the how that works. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Cool. So we made a lambda function. So back to the plan. There's a plan. <laughs> uh, okay, create mock, uh, add, build and deploy. Okay, we did that. Uh, now let's work on the step function, finally. I've been teasing this for like uh, a couple of streams now. Uh, and how's this gonna work? Oh, hey. Louis Pillfold just raiders. raided with 40 viewers. Uh, is it is it Louis? Welcome in. Thanks for the raid. An amazing. Uh, this is probably the biggest raid I've ever had. So welcome, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Louis, yes. Uh, hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, it's gonna be very. Uh, Naruto Neo like. just followed. Uh, for a little bit <laughs> and another. Uh. Let's see. The fall away and uh, the fall away just followed. Yeah, there you go. What what the what what the the voice said said. Uh, thanks so much for the follows. Uh, so what were you? Yeah, you. Uh, I, I do have a Moonlander. Uh, what did Frosty Tool say about you? We got the shout out out. Hopefully, you were also doing software and game development. How was your stream? Uh, mastermind behind the the Gleam programming language. Wow, Brainless has been been saying stuff about Gleam in past uh, coding streams. Uh, from text searching, Gleam and Erlang hacking Gleam projects. Nice. Let me try to catch up with chat. Uh, <laughs> is is that an accurate summarization? Let me know. Good. Mostly complaining about Bitwarden not being open source anymore. Yeah, I was. I forget why. I was looking at but bit more than the bit warden at some point. I forget the context, but uh yeah. Uh <laughs> uh let's see. CCR says for bit warden since the desktop relies on internal SDK. Uh oh. the web and docker builds also be closed source, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember why I was looking at build the warden. It's not something I don't think it's something I've ever used. I probably was looking at like credential storage stuff at some point. That's what that is, right? Uh so welcome in everyone. Um I am uh Saban. I do a few different kinds of I guess I'm a, a variety streamer and sometimes VTuber. Uh <laughs> Uh, uh, that, that just kind of sort of happened. Um, so on Sundays in the mornings, like now, I do these uh, coding streams. For the last 10 months or so, I've been working on this program called Glowing Telegram. And it is, I have too many windows. Uh, it is this guy. It is a tool for managing stream recordings. Uh, and there's a summary. Maybe that works, there we go. Uh, like a short summary video. Uh, about the project, 
here's some other details. Here is a link to the GitHub. There you go. Um, so it is a HGPL3 uh, project that I've been working on on stream from basically this year uh, to, and it's, it's kind of meta, right? Because it's like a, a tool to help me take my local recordings of my streams and turn them into YouTube videos and just like manage all the media. Uh, I'm currently in the process of taking this Rust backend TypeScript React front end and uh, AWSifying it, cloudifying it. Um, we are currently in the process of creating some Lambda functions. And I was just remarking on the fact that apparently recently AWS switched their code source viewer in uh, the Lambda console to be uh, embedded VS code, uh, which is nice for me because that's what I also use. Do I have a link to the keyboard layout? It is a Colmac layout. Um, ba, 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 ba. Do I have a link? It is, yeah, give me one second. I don't think I have that handy, but I can. What is the website? Louise Pilfol just followed. Thank you for the follow. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, or X. One second. If I sign in, I have an account, right? Oh, it's probably linked to my GitHub. Give me one second. Hunt that down. Uh, let's see. Is this anonymous, anonymously accessible? Yes. So, uh, layout that new. Oh, it is. Uh, here's mine now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and, uh, to do all of the AWS -ification, cloudification, whatever, uh, I decided to use Pulumi, uh, one, because I don't really care for things like, well, specifically, I don't really care for Terraform. Uh, I professionally have done a lot of stuff with uh, AWS Cloud Development Kit, and I really like that. So I wanted something in a similar vein, but different, so I could be, be learning something different and try try something else out. So Pulumi was the thing. Um, and there we go. So we can see like our stacks. Here's a little Telegram. My condolences. Uh, what for Pulumi? It's a... Uh, it's a mixed bag. Um, it it works. <laughs> AWS, yeah, it's it's something I know fairly well. Um, all the different services and stuff, so it's a it's an easy place to go to um, for getting stuff, not just running on my computer. Like as I've been working on this project, I've also been using this project to like get all my videos onto YouTube to uh, help me um, take out some of the drudgery from cutting up VODs and uh, also using OpenAI's um, API to do summarization, using OpenAI Whisper to do uh, speech to text transcription. So I've been using this tool uh, this year as well, um, but it could be better. But also it's been just running locally on my computer and that has some limitations. <laughs> That's the reason Louis made Gleam. Uh, what, because of AWS? We actually, um, I've not used Gleam, uh, but because of Brainless, I'm pretty sure if I'm rem remembering this right, I did start, oh, I, I think it's on, yes, yeah, on a different branch. Um, we had at one point worked on a Twitch bot with uh, Elixir. Um, back earlier this year. Uh, yeah, Elixir mentioned. <laughs> no, but for simpler development and the, the great Erlang VM. Yeah, I I don't have a lot of experience with Erlang. Um, I had some, I guess you could call it teething pains with the Twitch bot. And it's just kind of a, it's, it was kind of a, I mean, this whole thing is a side project, right? From, from my day job. But the Twitch bot was a side project of a side project. Uh, because eventually what I'd like to do 
is in addition to all this great metadata that I'm collecting uh, from like what I'm saying and stream stuff, I would also like to get like chat messages and metadata into this as well. So we can have all the data uh, to analyze and uh, probably just glean some information from. Brainless says, became like an elixir this year. Been loving it. I do have my eye on Gleam as my next one as soon as I have some time. Well, once you learn <laughs> some Gleam, uh, Brainless, then you can you can teach me, right? Maybe we could rewrite the Twitch bot since I'll have forgotten everything about how it works with, uh, with Gleam when the time comes. So yeah, we're, we're extracting all this different metadata from the video files uh, and doing like silence detection using uh, FF probe, uh, FF MPEG, getting metadata with FF probe, uh, doing a transcription um, with timestamps using uh, OpenAI Whisper. So all of this, uh, that that is an accurate transcription because like I was saying, I am a variety streamer. So I do stream these do these coding streams on Sunday. And then uh, typically Monday evenings, I'm streaming uh, modded Minecraft. Uh, this year it has been, and probably for a long time, it's gonna be Greg Tech New Horizons, um, because that is a massive uh, mod pack. And then um, Friday is kind of a grab bag. Uh, generally, I take nominations in the community discord, and we do a poll at the beginning of the stream to decide what I will actually be playing. Uh, last Friday was satisfactory. The Friday, uh, I missed the Friday before, but the Friday before that was Victoria three before that, before that was astronauts. Uh, so yeah, a grab bag. Okay. So presently the thing that I was, uh, going to start working on is, uh, we need a step function. Well, we could, we could do other things, but I'm going to make a step function like this one to, uh, trigger the batch job to transcribe audio to text and to invoke OpenAI's API to do summarization of said transcript. Uh, and I have an example from the test project of how to define a step function, I think. Okay, that's not super helpful. Let's go back to the Pulumi docs. <laughs> Did I have a closer? Nope. Okay. Search. Um, I think that's where I want to be. AWS native, maybe. Machine. Yep. Uh, all this complexity is killing my brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that the individual pieces are, uh, simple. And then what I've decided to do is to plug them together in a way that will, I guess I'm optimizing for future flexibility, uh, which maybe is not the best thing but that's what I have decided to do. Okay, so we're gonna make a step function. I don't know if I'll actually need that name reference, but we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, also, Brainless gifting a sub to Louis. Brainless Society gifted a tier one subscription to Louis Billfold. Your seventh gifted sub. Thanks so much. Uh, what do we need to do with the resource name here? Hmm. Do we need to do something special with these resource names? I forget. To prevent, I think, maybe not. Let me let me go find another example and set that structure. Like in the audio transcriber job, are we doing something yeah, we are, okay, we're like prepending it with name. So we probably should do that elsewhere as well, right? So yeah, like that. Um, uh, something like that. 
And the reason is that I think potentially there's a risk of, um, I think these names need to be unique across the whole, like everything that's deployed. Which I have mixed feelings on coming from the cloud development kit where that's not necessary. Pretty sure that's not, ne not necessary. Uh, there we go. Okay. So and then we're not going to embed the JSON like this for the definition. Um, do we have an example where we read from a file? I think maybe there was a definition string definition as three location. What are the other arguments here? Definition. State machine, YAML, or JSON, S3 location, string, substitutions. So I think what I need to do, I look at this type. No, no, I can't look at this type. Great. Can I look at this type here? Can I, can I go here? Uh, let's see. How long have you had your moon lander and how long have you used the Colmac layout? So when I bought this, uh, this is also Brainless's fault because he mentioned it and I looked at it and I was like, huh, that, that, that could be a good thing. Uh, so I think I bought this in December <laughs> and when I decided I was going to invest in this and invest the time, <laughs> uh, it's, I, I mean, I, I say that in the, in the nicest way. Um, it's just like Brainless mentioned it. I looked at it. It's, it's not his fault but you mentioned it and i looked at it and i was like oh cool i can i can spend the money on that and i think that would be a good investment both the money to buy it but then also the amount of time it's going to take uh with me uh getting used to it but if i was going to invest that time in learning a split keyboard because i went from like you know like a corsair gaming laptop uh a traditional one to this uh it was like Maybe I should look at other like key layouts while I'm at it. So um, I immediately went to start using this. Uh, I think it, that was in December and uh, or maybe January. And right off the bat was using Colmac. So uh, <laughs> there was some, the, there was a, a steep learning curve there um, to, to, you know, a lot of like looking at keys constantly. I've gotten better. Um, the fact that I still switch between other computers that are QWERTY and this um, has some challenges where uh, <laughs> I'm I'm probably still not as proficient here, yes, as uh, I I was before on a QWERTY keyboard, but that's okay. Uh, especially these days, at least in my day job, uh, I'd still do a lot of typing, but that's not code. <laughs> uh, and I'm in, I'm more uh, of a meetings person now uh, in, in the day job as, as an engineering manager, instead of uh, someone who uh, is a full-time uh, coder. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I was looking for what are we passing? So this is a state machine definitions arg, which tells me nothing. <laughs> Great. Going back, um, so we can give it a string or a state machine definitions arg. Oh, I see. So if we parse the definition and we have a dictionary representing it, we can pass that in there or I can pass a string. So I think I'll pass a string and um, we're going to read that from a file. Uh, so this is going to be something like, yeah, state machine JSON. Uh, well, I call it a step function. And I think the default is R. Yeah. Okay. And um, I could parse it. Uh, I guess I could do that. Sure.
Yeah, we'll do that. Definition equals. Hmm, that's fun. Shouldn't it, shouldn't it take that? Uh, and the follow-up says, I'm still using QWERTY. I got mine in September. You use yours everywhere. I did actually, I was on a, um, a work trip, uh, a couple of work trips this year, and I did bring it with me and use it a little bit. Uh, mainly a little bit because, you know, it was not actually on my computer a lot. Uh, again, mostly meetings, but uh, yeah, this, this is nice to be able, you can pack it up and you can put it in the little carry thing and it's nice for that. Uh, and then the other thing we need to pass in here are substitutions. And this is going to let me pass in the, the like arn of the lambda to the step function definition. Uh, and let's see, how is that supposed to work? Okay, so this is a mapping of string to either a string or enter bool. And then we have to put in a substitution like this in our JSON. Huh? Check the values obtained at runtime. Template parameter names. Yeah. So I think how this should work is that if I look at, here's the task to summarize the transcription. I think I'm missing something. Hold well, on, let's go to the AWS console. And did I already close the step function? Oh, there it is. Okay. So if I look at summarize transcription, oh, when I when I did this, I didn't provide a function name. So the function exists now, so I can select it. And then we can look at the code for that step. So it's the parameters, right? The, this. And I don't actually want to put the R in here because of course, what if I deploy this into a different region or I, um, you know, otherwise change the Lambda in a way, like I create a different Lambda or whatever. I want to have this uh, programmatically linked, right? So we'll do this and we'll call this summarize. Ah. Um, summarize, what did I call it? Transcription. Function arm, there we go. So I think, let's see, are there, is there more than one property here for the arn? All if I invoke ARN. All if I ARN, ARN with Lambda version number to be used in invoking Lambda function from API Gateway. Interesting. Well, we're not invoking it from API Gateway. What is version? Can I do version ARN? Right, so this would result in an ARN that spe specifically picks the, the particular version of the Lambda uh, that was being deployed, which would mean that, oh, it's dinner time. Hey, thanks again so much for the raid and for uh, hanging out. I hope you have a good dinner and the rest of your day. And uh, let me make sure that I drop you a follow as well. See if I can catch one of your streams. Oh, nice. What's that? <laughs> uh, page not found. I guess that's not for me. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, what else do we need to do here? Um, I will eventually want to update these references. Let's uh, let me just drop a to do here. To do add parameters. Uh, well, they're called substitutions, I guess. Substitutions for 
uh, the job you and uh, of the how do you transcribe? Yeah. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh No worries. I assumed it was something like that when I clicked on it and got a 404. Must be private. Okay. Uh, so this might work. Hmm. I mean, not work work, but we, we might be actually actually able to deploy this. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so uh, property definition comment value nil has a problem. Unknown property definition at comment start at and states. Interesting. So something that I'm doing is wrong. So I need to save that file. Uh, definition here. Uh, let's go over to Pulumi Docs. Format of the object must match the format of your cloud formation template. What does it mean? <laughs> I don't have a cloud formation template file. Uh, okay, I might just pass the string instead. Let's, uh, let's just make a dummy value there and we'll do f.read. See if that makes it happier. And if this doesn't work, we might have to switch to the AWS package instead of the AWS native one. But okay, so what is this gonna do? It wants to delete. Oh, right, because I renamed. I renamed the, uh, uh, I changed the way that things were being named to use the base name of the component. Uh, right, so we're removing the old things and bringing in the new things, and then we're creating a state machine, uh, which might, I mean, it's, it's not going to necessarily work, uh, but we should be able to execute it, see what happens. Have to think about uh, what the input needs to be for this. How long does this take? Take that long. Hmm. Thirty seconds to create the roll. I feel like it's been faster in the past. That's okay. I guess this is one side of using something like local stack, like we were trying a few streams ago. Uh, whoops. SDR object has no attribute R. Okay. So this is uh, this. This is the wrong thing to do. Is there a way, is there an appropriate way to get the, maybe it's the R? Nope. Maybe I should look at the docs. Qualified Arn? Is that it? Arn identifying your Lambda function version. Yeah, I think so. Let's try that. Uh, what was I saying? I guess the, the potentially the benefit of using something like local stack. Um, well, two benefits, right? One is that potentially resource provisioning is faster because it's just happening locally on kind of like a, 
a, a much more <laughs> limited thing than the real infrastructure. And uh, two, it's running locally and you're not you know, potentially incurring costs in AWS um, or risks, risks of costs. So there's something to be said for that. All right, so now it's gonna go and try to create the step function again and then delete the things that it was going to delete before. I might have to go back and try local stack again at some point. Uh, it was uh, re revealed to me. Uh, someone let me know, someone at uh, local stack actually let me know that they do have like a hobbyist plan. Uh, interesting to uh, uh, use local stack and like the pro features without having to pay uh, for the pro version. So what happened? Operation create failed with access denied. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it surprised me too. But uh, let's see if I if I go to local stack, local stack pricing. Right. So if you go to their local stack at cloud, you go to the pricing page, you don't see it here, right? It's not talked about um, at all, right? Which is why I didn't know that it existed. Uh, but if you log in, uh, and hopefully there's nothing secret here, uh, and we go to um, subscriptions. Yeah, there's a hobby subscription, right? Um, don't want to click on billing on stream. Hold on one sec. Uh, nope. I'm glad I did. That has my address on it. I forget where it is. It's somewhere in that area, though. I guess maybe if you aren't on a plan. There's an option to I oh, that also shows my address. Okay, well I won't be showing that, but basically you have to be locked in uh, to the free version, and then you go to the place where you would like select a, a plan, and there is there there's a setup like it's three things like this, and then at the bottom there's an option that is not very well highlighted. That's like a hobbyist option that's free for non-commercial use, right? Uh, and I was told I could use that by their rep. So I may go back to that at some point, try it out a little bit more. Um, but uh, first I should figure out what's going on here. So now that the global service principle states that Amazon yeah, sort of region one is authorized to assume the provided role. Interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, of course not. Why are we giving the Lambda role to the state machine? That That is incorrect. Uh, state machine role. Uh, yeah, we need that. There we go. Um, we need a role. If we're going to give it a role, it needs to be a role that's assumable by the service in question. That's why that didn't work. Sadly, my use case is commercial. Yep. Um, technically, I do get money from streaming. So in a sense, uh, <laughs> I, I think, um, I mean, I was told I could use it for, for like, for the stream to kind of show stuff off. So that, that's fine. I think the intent is, you know, if you're using it for work, basically, if you're, um, and it's, I think it's the way that it is specifically because, you know, it is a, a dev slash test tool. So it's never going to be something that you're deploying into production. So they can't just have like, try this out for developers. And then, you know, it's a dev tool, right? Um, which is kind of an awkward place to be because so many dev tools are free. Uh, although I, I have used the thing in the past, um, for 
I guess I only used that for work. So I guess I convinced the company to pay for that. Uh, Wallaby JS to, uh, for like JavaScript TypeScript uh, unit test running it in the IDE. That's very nice. Right, create a new role. Oh, it's created, right? Okay, we're creating the step function now. Maybe it will work this time. Hmm. Uh, okay, that role is not authorized to create managed rule. Hmm, interesting. Um, we probably need some uh, things attached to this role for it to work. Uh, let's see, what is this role? that potentially Copilot has hallucinated for us. Let's go hunt that down. So, oh, there's an IAM tab. Let's go there. Roles. Does it exist? Um, Oh, right, it's a policy, not a role. So what is this policy grant? This allows the step function to do everything to do with step functions. Uh, maybe not. This, this policy is something you would attach to a role for an actual user that's going to go into the AWS console and interact with step functions because it allows them to do everything to do with step functions and also like list roles and uh, allows them to um, like list Lambda functions and, and things like that. Uh, and then we have a read only policy, I guess for now. For now, uh, I will use that managed policy. Uh, I That's probably too broad of a set of permissions to give to the role for the step function. Uh, noting here that, of course, since we've not successfully provisioned everything yet, Bloomy has not had an opportunity to kind of trim out old things. Uh, that policy doesn't exist, so it's close, but not, not quite right. Um, here's the actual arm. How is it different? Oops. Uh, hmm, interesting. That looks the same. Policy service role. Oh, it doesn't have service role. Ah. Pretty close. Just, you know, wrong enough to be <laughs> wrong. AKA not exactly right. Um, I wonder if I look at the this step function. Required permissions. Hmm. Going back, there are a lot of things that you know, all the different things you can do instead of a step function or to a step function. 
Um, but what does the step function actually need itself to be able to do things? What is like the minimal set of permissions that we need to grant? Aha. Permissions. You. Interesting. Okay, so this is what we had before, where we did not attach any permissions, uh, any policies to the role. Interesting. Uh, failed. Machine role not authorized to create managed role. Uh, right. So this is saying, I mean, it's the same message we got before, but thinking about what it's actually saying, right? So the step function is attempting to use the role that we're giving it to modify its I am role. That is interesting. Hey, Stack Overflow. something here so if I go back to here and let me let me create this workflow oh this could be good I save this hey look <laughs> the role is not authorized to create managed role uh, interesting okay let's have it create a new role now let's take a look at what that role is uh, so it made this step functions my state machine whatever we'll have to delete that in the step function I don't want extra things living in here. Uh, no, nothing secret there. Okay, so roles. Uh, step function. There we go. All right, so you can see it has the, the same trust relationship we've already previously defined. And then it has a bunch of customer managed uh, policies attached to it. AKA, you know, ones that are defined um, you know, within this account versus the thing that we were attaching before, right? This step function full access is a, uh, manage, <clears throat> excuse me, manage policy. Yeah. Okay. Just pointing out that you need these permissions also this uh, that probably means our step function is referring to, yeah, okay, so a to-do, uh, also uh, the, the DynamoDB table <laughs> needs to be parameterized. Are there any other instant instances of that? Okay, good. Okay, so... Um, we're going to get rid of this and can we just do inline policies? There we go. So 
So we want to give it permission to invoke that Lambda function. Uh, we want to give it permission to access our DynamoDB table. Uh, we don't have the table name or ARN in this construct or component yet. So I'll just use star. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Really, I will do that. Uh, okay, what, what other permissions do we need? Um, so we do need get and put. Uh, and then, actually, I think I'll just hard code the resource name. Right, because I don't want to hard code this ARN, because what if we change things and the ARN is different? What if I wanted to deploy into a different region? Uh, and then we also need permissions to interact with uh, AWS Batch and uh, EventBridge to find out when things happen. Uh, and Uh, oops, we had all this. Just events. Step function, get events for batch shop. Interesting. Where did that come from? I didn't create that. I must have created that itself. That's showing, yeah. Managed. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um. Hmm. Use region and count ID. Hey, Martinator. How's it going? Welcome in. How are you doing today? So, uh, how was your evening? <laughs> good, good. Well, that's great. Uh, I'm just trying to nail down. Yeah, I'm glad you're able to, to come by as well. I'm trying to nail down permissions this step function needs so that uh, the deploy will actually work. I think. Oh, well, let's add the X-ray permissions. X-ray is a very nice service in AWS that lets us kind of see tr application traces of things that happen as they happen, or well, after they happen, very quickly after they happen. Um, okay, so that should be good. Let me delete. Actions. Okay, can't delete here. Let's go back to state machines and delete. And I really mean it. Maybe we can get this all cleaned up and redeployed before we have to take a break. Uh, for those that are new here, I know some of you are. Um, I typically take a break every hour. I usually stream for about three hours per session. And I take a, a three-ish minute break uh, every hour. Uh, it's uh, healthy. <laughs> and also is something that um, makes it so that we don't have to have free roll ads on the, on the stream. Because I can just roll ads while we're taking a break. All right, so that's cleaned up. What if I try to deploy now? Lumi AWS native IAM has no attribute policy. Okay, so that was something that doesn't exist. How do we do this elsewhere? Uh, I see it's IAM role uh, policy args, policy name, policy document. 
a policy name. Policy document. Oh no, underscore. There you go. Uh, and then we don't need JSON DOMs. Right, it's just, it actually just takes the dictionary directly. There we go. All right, and um, a cliffhanger. We'll see how this goes after the break, PRB.